Sounds on. Hey guys, uh, thanks for coming out. Um, this is a session that we're going to talk about how to troubleshoot SDN. Uh, I call it Dude, Where's My Packet? Um, myself, my name is Michael Ford. I am Director of Technical Services for uh, Metacora. I run our worldwide sales, uh, sorry, field team, field engineering, training, professional services, all of these kind of things. So I have a pretty wide background in terms of startups, customer facing roles. Uh, I'm the internal champion for the customer, and so I have a pretty unique perspective in terms of operators of clouds. Um, I'm also our head brewmaster, <laughs> our barbecue pit master, and a car mechanic. I actually put these in here for a reason because just like troubleshooting anything in technology, technology troubleshooting is a very personal thing. A lot of people do it a different way. It's part art and part science. So basically, in a traditional sense, I say it's broke. Now what? When you think about traditional uh, networks and what you're going to do with troubleshooting, there's a lot of different tools that you have to use, a lot of different areas uh, to troubleshoot when we're talking about networking. You're going to use your Linux foo, your Google foo. You're going to do a lot of different stuff. You've got to go to all these different places. Um, use Wireshark, of course, TCB dump. And that's actually really time consuming for a lot of operators. Um, you need a lot of patience. And for me, when I do troubleshooting, you need a lot of beer. You've got to have this patience and beer. Um, if you think about cloud operators and, and the way you know, things are working with traditional Neutron, uh, traditional OVS troubleshooting, you're, you're dumping packets here and there, you're, you're checking over here for this port and trying to TCP dump it and check the routing tables, and it gets actually really complex and it's very, very difficult. So, oops, let me go back one here. When you think about the, the rise of the SDNs, all of our competitors you know, at Metacora, um, you have uh, basically a packet, when it left the VM, uh, it enters a black box, you know, and I put this in here, that it enters a subspace wormhole and magically appears on the other side. Uh, and I say that because you never know, you don't know what, what the packet's doing. And that's a very fundamental thing that you have to know when you're doing um, any kind of network troubleshooting. Uh, as I say, when it presents the problem to the traditional operators, um, you're trying to understand why a failure happens, why a VM can't talk to another VM east-west inside your cloud, or even north-south when you're sending it out, you know, doing NAT or anything layer three. Um, so the traditional operator, they, they need to have an understanding of exactly what's going on with these packets. And so here at Mitakura, um, you know, we, we designed a technology to allow you to look into that black box. Um, which I'll show in just a minute. Um, but the main point is that when you have the knowledge of what's going on with the packet in your environment, this allows you to have a you know, more confident approach to you know, running and operating your cloud. You can sleep better at night, and we all like to sleep a lot, so um, it's a very good thing. So, back to dude, where's my packet? As I was saying, so this, this packet troubleshooting, um, the connectivity issues in the cloud, this is the number one thing that you're going to do when you're operating a cloud, especially with an SDN. You're going to have a developer come to you at some point, and he, you know, maybe they're running continuous integration, and they're like, hey, two days ago, my VMs could not talk for an hour. What happened? And so this is where having a history of what happened, not only on top of actually knowing what's going on inside the black box, is very helpful. So the Metonet flow tracing and flow history. Uh, if anybody's not familiar with Metonet, um, basically, you know, it's a fully decentralized SDN platform. Uh, we run agents like uh, locally, we replace the OVS user space agent when we're talking Neutron OVS. But it's basically a packet simulator. A packet comes out of a VM, our agent would catch it, and it runs a packet simulation on it. It'll do all of the things like TTL decrementation, going, it'll simulate it going through a router, bridge, layer three, VPN, distributed uh, load balancing, all of these things, and then it encapsulates it, sends it via VXLAN tunnel to another hypervisor. And as I was saying, that's always been the black box before. That's our black box at least. So with this Metonet flow tracing and flow history, now you have a record of what our agents are doing um, locally and as an aggregated system. Um, I will show you it here, and let's see, let me get out of this guy here, and I apologize, the internet was pretty bad here, so I had to pull up a bunch of tabs and preload this. Um, this is our Metonet manager, 
Um, and the MetoNet manager is kind of like the, the operations control center with MetoNet. Um, it gives you the ability to quickly see all the network uh, aspects um, inside your SDN uh, for, for your cloud, and so for a cloud operator. Um, this is a, another tool that you'd use alongside Horizon, you know, when you're looking through your networks and, and a few different things. Um, we have this concept of hosts, and when you're doing some troubleshooting, the first place is always to check the health of the SDN itself, and this is going to be your hosts. In this environment, I only have one compute node, so it's going to show one host, but it's up. In the case of having 60 or 80 compute nodes, it would tell you how many up are and how many are down. So these are the MetoNet agents. So that's the first place you can look for a problem. Um, if we take a look at our routers, okay. So as an operator, when you're wondering what's going on with the network, um, not only on top of the flow history and flow tracing that you might be doing, you want to see some, some port analytics. So if you think about how much traffic's running through a given tenant router. Um, we have the ability to show you that inside MetoNet Manager in a realistic way. Um, you can see you know, if a tenant is hammering the specifics of the network, if, they're, if there's uh, specific ports, if we take a look down here. Um, you can see specific ports here. You can see their traffic over history. So you know, if, you're, if you're experiencing a lot of load and latency or one of your users calls up and says, why, why is the network so slow? You quickly go into MetoNet Manager, pull up, and you can say, hey, your port is running, you know, six gigabits per second out of one of your VMs. What are you doing? You know, you, know, you can very easily identify specific problems inside your network. And so you can kind of hover over. You can check details on ports. Um, so like this port, you know, it gives you the UUID, the address that's attached to it, uh, you know, all the MAC addresses and, and everything else that you would need to actually start troubleshooting specific problems. And that's why I'm showing you what we do with the routers and stuff first. Um, also, uh, within MetoNet, you can see here we have the concept of filters. The, the MetoNet filters allow you to do many uh, different things inside of your network. You can do, of course, uh, security groups, firewall, you know, distributed firewall and a few other things, but it also allows you to do some service insertion chaining. You can say, you know, send traffic from this node if it matches X address, you know, wherever you want to send the traffic, and it'll return the traffic as well. But you can quickly identify, you know, what we're using there. The security chains uh, actually also appear on the bridges. So if we take a look at a bridge, um, the, the, con the bridge is going to be like if you're in uh, OpenStack Horizon, you, you know, you create a network and you cr create the subnet. This is going to be the bridge in MetoNet. And so from here, if you take a look at the bridge, you can see that uh, you know, what traffic's going over that specific bridge. So now, when you're going from router down to the bridge level, so you have a tenant view, an aggregated tenant view. And then when you click on the bridge, now we have a specific to, uh, sorry, uh, a subnet specific information. Because inside of a tenant, you might have you know, a thousand subnets. And you can take a look at one of them to see which VM uh, is attached to it, which uh, VM is sending traffic, how many flows per second it's generating. Um, you, you know, check out layer two ports, MAC addresses, all of these things. Sorry, I apologize. Uh, thirsty here. So, so the next thing, though, this is the important bits. So when we talk about flow history, this is where um, you're going to start aggregating a lot of information here. Uh, flow tracing in our open source product uh, is done on a per node basis. You'd go into a single compute node, say, uh, I want to see what simulations are happening for this VM, this port, this protocol, and it'll pull all of them out. With our enterprise product, though, we take all of this data and we aggregate it into an analytics cluster. Uh, it's pretty slick the way we do it, as it doesn't impact uh, CPU performance or you know, uh, you know, RAM on a specific hypervisor. So you take all of this information, and what are you going to do with it? Well, in the case uh, earlier when I said the, you know, you get the developer that calls up and said, what happened two days ago during this time frame? So you can go into the product and you can pull up the flow history. Uh, so if we kind of scroll down here, I have one open. And you say, okay, well, during that time frame, here's the simulation, here's the protocol. In this case, this is an ARP request that we're dropping. Um, this is based on anti-spoof rules. But so you pull up here and you hit show details. And what you can see is the flow visual visualization. So if you take a look, this is a very simple environment just for this demo. But you see where it says private bridge? 
you have uh, the filters that are applied to it, so all of the security groups. And you can see this is the steps that the packet's going to go through before it's sent out of a VXLAN tunnel. And so in this case, you can see, uh, you know, drop if it doesn't match this IP address. That's an anti-spoof rule. If it doesn't match this MAC, if it's uh, basically if it's unfragmented, we can return it and accept it. You can do jump change, as I was saying earlier, about, uh, you know, service insertion chaining. But th these types of views and... All, all of the SDN players are kind of going this direction. We all have a different take on uh, what, what this is. But in reality, these are the tools that operators are going to need because you have to be able to know what's going on inside your network at all times. And so we call it opening Pandora's box now. And so the, the more we can push for operations tools like this, the faster OpenStack adoption is going to happen as well. Because now you're, you're, you have a production-ready, uh, professional-grade type solution that we're all used to in a traditional, you know, bare metal world. Um, so, one thing I did want to mention, um, ah, I don't have it set up here, I apologize. Um, when you're talking about operators again, uh, just checking time. So, if you think about, you know, how, how many here are OpenStack operators, I should ask? We got one, so not many operators, okay, that's fine. Uh, trying to give you a little bit of insight into what operators do on a daily basis, but um, things like, like I said, like the flow tracing, flow history, uh, you know, data aggregation, um, those, those are really needed right now. Um, so I definitely uh, want everybody to kind of see what we're doing at Metacora, what we're going to be doing in the future, and kind of the power of what SDN in general will do for an OpenStack cloud. Um, but uh, running out of time here. You know, it's just, it's, it's one of those things, it's, it's tough now that there's not that many operators here to, to kind of, you know, get out there. But um, is there any questions so far? Do you have a question? No, no question? Thought you had one. So I think that's going to be the end of my presentation. I just wanted to show you guys the MutoNet Manager, um, you know, what we're doing with the open source product, what we're doing with the enterprise product, you know, kind of where we're going to go, where we're trying to help push the industry, and, you know, at, as we're all here for, you know, at the OpenStack Summit is to kind of drive this whole OpenStack you know, platform forward. So, uh, questions? Any? No? Okay. Great, guys. Thanks for coming out. I appreciate it.